Welcome to It's On Halifax with your hosts, Mark Adam and Pat King. It's On Halifax is brought to you by Maladjusted Media and Oasis on Spring Garden Road. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another week of It's On Halifax, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Pat King. You can find me on Twitter at PatKingHFX and sitting to my left. I'm Mark Adam. I'm also on Twitter, MarkAdamHFX. Welcome to the show. Pat is not wearing a shirt for those tuning in live with well, the video. People didn't have to know on the, the listening, but I, I jogged here this morning. Adam has banned me from jogging to the podcast for subsequent weeks. Because I decided to jog over here in full heat gear. Dumb um, ass. And if, if you're living somehow under a rock today, or you're joining us from another part of the world, today is hotter than the devil's gooch. It's brutal. It is not a cool day out no, there. No, no. Um, so I, I overheated a little bit. I overdid it. And Adam's like, so you're going to do it shirtless? And I'm like, I will walk around everywhere shirtless today, if it won't get me banned or... <laughs> get a restraining order i mean i'll try not to go near parks or like Children. playgrounds or anything <laughs> yeah. so but it is a beautiful day nonetheless and we hope that you're enjoying it yes um we are all kinds of uh, uh, fuck english adam oh it's too hot to think man it's too hot to think Get on it, buddy. The last couple of days have been ridiculous <sighs> yesterday i woke up and i just i drank like 8 liters of water <laughs> Because I knew I had to, I played soccer yesterday at five o'clock, and I was like, in that fucking heat, this is gonna yeah. suck. So I drank so much water, went to soccer, played soccer, kept drinking water the entire time I was there, and didn't have to pee. Like <laughs> no, it was just you watch it all go in, and you're like, where constant, is it even going? Constant sweat, constant sweat. I know. I just I since I got here probably about twenty minutes ago, I've drank three or four glasses of water, and I don't even feel it. It's sucking it up like a sponge. Wonderful. But I, I spent yesterday, uh, myself and the guys from Classy Nads podcast, we uh, we had a Modern Masters Magic the Gathering draft, so we, we spent all, all day in my apartment, sitting at a table. Sweltering? I have these little Japanese fans that I brought back with me. Um, so we were just passing them around the table. <laughs> that was all we could do, drink cold beer and fan ourselves like little Japanese people. <laughs> it was brilliant, man. There's a reason those fucking things have been around for thousands of years. Yeah, they require very little effort to get the... the yeah, bam. Exactly, to get the... Just a little, little flick of the wrist. Yeah. But then you need to get people who are doing this, and you're like, you are causing more heat yes. to your body than you are taking Yeah, away. and you are going to get carpal tunnel or something. Just but, but fucking the, lay the, off with the, the fan. The little Japanese fans, you literally just flick your wrist. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, it saved us. It was a saving grace. It was great. What I really need to do is barbecue something. I feel. I haven't, I haven't really barbecued anything quite yet this year, and summer has been upon us for weeks. Yeah, summer's one of those things where you don't want to waste yeah. any of it. Yeah. Because it's super short here, and you you don't want any little bit of it to escape. Hopefully it'll But be... sometimes it gets so hot that you can't help but just like, okay, fuck today. Okay, yeah. I'll try it again tomorrow. Yeah, right, wait, I'm done for now. Let's just gonna crawl under a dark corner and chill. My cat's been having quite a time, constantly freaking out. Meow, meow, meow. Just super hot. I've been leaving cold water in the tub up to her ankles and like putting ice in her dish and just like, I'm, yeah, I couldn't imagine suffering through this with fur. Although, as you can see, I'm not too far off. <laughs> lol. Yeah, lol. Oh. What'd you do for Canada Day? I did absolutely nothing for Canada Day. You stayed home? Pretty much. That's a very exciting story, Pat. Thank you. Regale us with more details. Well, um, um, I had a pretty solid bowel movement that day. Oh, no, you know what? <laughs> details over. You're, you're, yeah, we don't need details on that. Just sitting on the shitter. Oh, Canada. Have you seen the video of Mr. Bean dancing to Mr. Boombastic? Yes, I have. Why, yes. Mm -hmm. Why, yes, I have. It's it's the best one of... Like, there's a, a, a video of him dancing to a bunch of different songs. The man has a master's in electrical engineering. Makes all of his money dancing like an idiot. <laughs> Guy's living the dream. I know. I'm living so jealous. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Motherfucker's a knight in everything. Yeah, Canada Day was... Um, 
It was a pretty laid back day. Well, I mean, the weather wasn't great. I mean, well, I had to work, bummer. so. Uh, like, bars bars are open on Canada Day, as it should be. I know it. <laughs> but uh, I work at one, so it wasn't a day off for me at all. So I, I went to work and did that kind of fun stuff. It was great. Yeah. And then uh, I went to a soccer game. On Canada Day? Yeah. I didn't play. I just went to watch oh. a game. It was fun times. Uh, what else happened this week, Pat? I went to go see the fireworks, which got rescheduled for this past Friday. Um, they were postponed after Canada Day. That was nice. Yeah. Perched up on Citadel Hill. and Were they any good? Yeah, they were fireworks. <clears throat> <laughs> I, I, I heard they were stupid short. Yeah, I, but I mean... I, I, was, I was down at a bar. I think they usually save the big ones for Natal Day. Yeah, I was oh, that's right. You texted me that night. You're like, you want to go out and chase girls and spend money we don't have on liquor? And I'm like, no. And you're like, oh, we did that already last <laughs> night. Sorry. Yeah, that's how we roll. You fucking guy. Yeah. So, that was a fun night, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I like soup. Let's move on. Did you see the video that I shared on the Facebook page uh, with Bill Nye narrating? About I, the global warming? I have not, but Bill Nye is turning into kind of a badass in his old age. Yeah, he... It's it's bang on point. He's like, it's not... Global warming is not a political matter. It's not a matter of opinion. It's scientific fact. And we need to deal with it. Yeah. Or we're all going to die. He's getting grim, man. But it's true. But he's like, also saying, like, but the kids, it's not something that you need to deal with eventually. It's something we need to deal with now. Well, and, and that's I think that's just our attitude here in the Western world. Like, ah, it's a tomorrow problem. <laughs> you know what's a today problem? Gay people. <laughs> yeah, like, Fuck where, you. Where, where does that mentality come from? I have no idea. But the video is is actually quite uh, quite potent, I would say. Well, it's it's like all the kids that he, he taught to love science have grown up, and they're in position they they can exercise um you know, their, their, their political opinion, um, and should. And I think he's a really, he's targeting that self-same audience now and talking to them more maturely, you know, because they, he, you know, they've, they've grown up with him. Um, I think the man's a fucking hero, to be quite honest. Well, I, I would agree, I would say. Um, he's, he's just fucking so smart. And he really is, and people give him kind of shit for being, you know, the children's TV guy. You know, he's he's got credentials, man. He's got cred. I mean, he's not just like, yeah, he was on TV teaching kids how to science, but... How know, to science? How to science. That's a verb now. Science is a verb? Yes. Is that That's a thing? Sure. That's, that's a thing in my world. He, uh... What else? What? He's, he's fighting the good fight. And I, you'll be glad to hear that um, now that he's done his debriefing and rehabilitation, Commander, well, former Commander... Yeah, uh, Chris Hatfield, Ret- retired commander. Retired Hatfield. commander, sorry, um, is going on speaking engagements. He's going to be touring. He was here in Halifax a couple of weeks ago, and I tr- and I missed it. Yeah. Well, shite. Yeah. Well, he spoke to a university. He had to be like a part of this program at the university in or order to be sneak into the program. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Right? Like that's exactly. People have been trying to get him for Halcon, um, and I think that would be outstanding. Um, I don't imagine his uh, his appearance fees are very steep. I wouldn't think that they'd be cheap either. No, I know. I mean, guy's got to make a living, but he seems to be genuinely passionate about it, so he's not going to be one of those prima donnas who just charges a, a premium to spend a day somewhere at a Q&A or something. Yeah, that's that's fair. I'm, uh, I want to bring up the video. I actually just want to show it. Sure. Because it's... It's... I think it's important that we worry about this shit, to be honest. As we sit here and sweat. Uh, well, that's just it, right? Global we're, we're warming isn't here. real. It's that's not a real stupid. thing. Don't worry about it. It'll, it'll pass in time. And I'm going to flip over to... You're uh, you're really on uh, on the ball with the... The video thing, there, buddy. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if this works. I think for the first time, um, ever. <laughs> so, so bear with me 
as we do a test run of showing you a video. I, d I just moved something. Shouldn't be doing test runs during the show, Adam. Hey, listen. What's fucking, what is this, amateur hour? Go big or go home. <laughs> I will go home. <laughs> Here's the video, people. So, enjoy if you can. And Adam's computer just had an aneurysm. Despite the noise about uncertainty in the political arena, warming will actually save lives, not endanger them. Do I believe scientists? No! The fundamentals of climate change have been understood by scientists for decades. To start with, there are naturally occurring gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane in the Earth's atmosphere. In themselves, they aren't bad. In fact, we need them in limited quantities to keep our atmosphere at just the right temperature for life as we know it to exist on Earth. But if we produce an excess of these gases, as we have, the temperature rises, as it has. If you want, you can replicate this effect yourself in a simple lab experiment. Here's how. Take two identical bottles and set them side by side. Put a thermometer in each bottle and seal them. Then run a hose from a source of CO2 into one of the bottles. Shine two heat lamps of equal intensity at equal distance onto each one. Within minutes, you will see the temperature of the bottle with the carbon dioxide in it rising faster and higher. The bottles are like our atmosphere. The lamps are like our sun. Most of the solar radiation reaching the Earth is absorbed by the surface and atmosphere, which in turn radiates energy out toward space as infrared energy, heat. Most of the heat energy from the surface is then absorbed by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and radiated back down toward the surface. The more greenhouse gases we create, the more heat is absorbed and sent back toward the surface to cause further warming. This recycled heat does more than bump up the thermometer. Warm air has the capacity to hold more moisture, and water vapor is itself a greenhouse gas. So there's even more warming, which means the planet's entire hydrological cycle, the water cycle, is affected. More evaporation, more precipitation, more extremes in general. For nearly a million years, the CO2 content of the atmosphere moved within a natural bandwidth. But during the Industrial Revolution, humans started burning fossil fuels in increasingly large amounts. In fact, now, we, that's around 7 billion of us, rely on carbon-based fuels for 85% of our energy. Humans currently produce around 35 billion tons of carbon dioxide every year. About 55% of that is absorbed by the ocean, land, and vegetation, while the rest remains in the atmosphere. Most of that excess comes from burning fossil fuels. And more than half of the emissions come from power plants and factories, while about a third comes from our various forms of transportation. If we continue the current trajectory, by the time our children reach middle age, the levels of atmospheric CO2 will reach twice that of our planet's long-time natural levels. That is why we're already seeing the temperature increase, and we're already seeing the consequences. 4% more moisture in the atmosphere above the ocean is enough to transition to a new normal. Dramatic weather events, floods, storms, droughts, fires, they're all happening at a frequency and intensity we've never experienced throughout human history. In other words, climate change. We've set this chain in motion, but the truly cataclysmic changes can be prevented if we act now. Carbon dioxide is not a harmful gas, it is a harmless gas. The first step is to separate fact from fiction. This climate science is no longer a matter of opinion, politics, or dogma. So let's not let a few dirty energy companies fool us or slow us down. There are now increasing numbers of affordable, clean-tech energy sources, all available to us in limitless supply. By embracing them, we will create jobs and improve the economy. The current climate crisis is reality. We can't wish it away. What we can do is cease the debate and the denial and move on to solutions together.
Damn, that was heavy. I know, right? I like how he takes pot shots, too. A couple of dirty energy companies just straight up telling them off. Yeah. Don't don't let these assholes with money... Like, Fuck up our entire planet. Yeah. Kill us all. I, I just thought that was really neat. Well, and, and Bill Nye, he puts it simply and succinctly, and that's really the way, like, you have to talk to people like they're children nowadays. I mean, it, uh, even the ones who give a shit and and who know that global, global warming is real, like, you have to break them from that complacency, and he's right about the frequency of tsunamis and fuck whatever. I mean, how often do you see it on the news? Some coastal Asian town is fucking wiped out. Yeah. No, it's it's a problem. It's a, a real, actual, visibly evident problem. <laughs> yeah. We are sitting here sweating our balls off in Nova Scotia. Well, and, and sweating is the least of our worries. Imagine if we get hit by a fucking typhoon or something. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, the, the heat change like like he said four percent more moisture well and, and we're in a perfect place in nova scotia we're we're halfway from the equator and the north pole so with climate change we're actually gonna turn into like a, a more tropical kind of area which is you know kind of cool but at the same time what cataclysmic you know i don't want to have to deal with flood rains and like shit like that if it means some warm weather more often I, I agree 100%. It doesn't make sense not to change the way that we that we behave as human beings. The, the things we do and the choices we make, the products we use, once you realize that they're going to kill you, you should probably... But, I mean, well, and I mean but pe- people like pro- the processed meats thing we've been talking about for yeah, a couple of weeks. People still smoke. People still eat meats with nitrates in them that... That cause that cancer when metabolized by the human body. Kill them. Um, you know, I, I don't know. People just have a death wish. People are complacent. It doesn't matter. Well, it's, well, I'd, I'd be willing to help if I didn't have to give up hot dogs. Yeah, slacktivism, and, man. And bacon. I well, I, and that's the beauty of going to uh, the farmers market like this week. I I don't eat bacon anymore. But I do buy bacon from uh, a couple of local producers that, that butcher it, and there's no preservatives, no nitrates, no nothing. I buy it straight from the pig, yo. Well, Mm-mm. half of half of some of the problem is what they're feeding the pig. True, true. Right, so you got to be careful. But a lot of local who... producers, man, like just real well, and, simple, and, small and I, farms. And I understand, and a lot of, I mean, President's Choice now has a commercial on television about how how you can... Like, half their products now you can trace back to the pig that it came from and the farm that it came from. And they put a picture of the farmers on the package and, like, they know that they're, they're, they're not feeding them bullshit steroids. Well, and, that, and uh, that, that can be a little misleading as well. I mean, big companies try to do stuff like that just to, but to get the general public back on their well, side. Well, I'm, I'm inclined to believe them because of the price difference. Like, because it costs so much to do that, and those products cost quite a bit more. Well, and but you know, it, it I I can see the pig, I can see the farmer. I know what they're feeding the pig. How are they processing the meat when it gets to the plant after it gets butchered and it gets sent over? You know, what are they using to preserve it? How long does it keep? You know, like it and that's that's the real question. Well, I think the big thing is they they have to recognize these companies because it's a business problem. They have to recognize that their products are about to be illegal. It already happened in the UK. Yep. And in some places, other places in Europe. So, they have to be proactive on this front. They have to make sure that their food doesn't contain nitrates and steroids and these things because it's going to be made illegal here very shortly. Oh, yeah. And fucking by well it should be. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Which means that... The companies that move first, a.k.a. apparently President's Choice, as, as I was saying, and Maple Leaf's been moving that way for a while now, getting away, f- like, they're putting all yeah. of their marketing, like, Ma- they still make all their... Ma- th- Maple Leaf is no stranger to having to redo your whole brand. Yeah, it, well, yes. <laughs> and that's... It fucked up something hard. Yeah, that's a fact. But the point is, 
they realize now that all all their marketing has to go into natural no preservatives no additives well, that's no the thing. this it, it no shouldn't that. be going into their marketing it should be going into their production well that's they still make all the same products they did before like the processed hot dogs and sausages and, but that's because people keep buying them until they're illegal people will keep buying them so that so companies will keep making them I think, I'm sure there's going to come up with... But like, you'll notice that Maple Leaf... There's going to be some like bootleg bologna companies around. Just, just watch. Like selling black market bologna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got the good stuff right here. Yeah. Out in Newfoundland. Why is it green? Whole market it's for supposed it. to be that color. Um, and they're going to keep making bologna, but it's not going to have the preservatives. It's not going to last as long. When you go buy it at the then store... it won't be bologna. <laughs> when you go buy it at the store, you put it in the fridge, you, you'll have a, you know, a couple days to eat it, but it won't last for a week and a half like bologna does now. You have a couple days. Oh, what a bummer! I have to go to the fucking well in, in store Italy. Once. In Italy, they people go to the market every day. Yeah, they make it kind of a, a routine. They well, yeah, and not only that, but then you know that your the products you're using are fresh. Well, and they go to the market. They buy their vegetables that they're going to use for the day, and and, and I, then they go back to the market the next day to use to get the vegetables and the meats and whatever that they're going to cook that day. I I, I and work, it's an, it's a it's something I want to adopt. I work as for a an unnamed an unnamed um, grocery delivery company doing phone support, and I have to listen to people complain that you know you forgot a couple of items out of my order. And I get this delivered so I don't have to go to the market because I don't have time to do that. And, you know, I think it's just an attitude problem that a lot of people have. I mean, we just we have this constant idea that we need to be rushing around and that what we put in our bodies and what we eat isn't important. You know, we just eat it for sustenance. When somebody else makes it. We're like, we don't even need to see the food that we eat prepared in front of us anymore. It's just whatever. We're like, we'll fucking eat whatever somebody puts in front of us. Yeah. I, I suppose. I suppose. But I, I personally enjoy going to the market. Once a week, I'll go down to the Seaport Farmer's Market, and I make a day out of it. I, you know, take a couple of hours, and it's it's fun. It's nice. What I want to start doing is I want to start... When I get off work every day, I want to start getting in the mindset of going to Pete's, buying the things I'm going to eat that day for supper, coming home, and making them. I want to start getting myself in that habit so that I like so that I don't expect to go to the grocery store buy a hundred dollars worth of shit and have it last two weeks yeah. in the fridge because all of those preservatives are keeping it fresh well, and I, I, I walk past a grocery store on my way home every day uh, and I, I don't see a grocery store is actually out of the way nah. but Pete's the market is yeah. right there and it's all fresh shit and I like I should be doing that and I got to get myself into that habit. Yeah, and, w and once you get out of the mind state that, you know, you don't have time for these things, once you make the time for them, you realize that not only have you got a lot more time in other places that you might not have realized, but you um, you feel better because you're, you're eating more and you're eating better. Um, you're, you're not spending as much, near as much money because you're not wasting anything. Um, you know, it, 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 to take that extra time, you know, it's just, you, you become leveled out. Like, I saw some great little things at the market when I, the, when I was there yesterday. It, you know they have juicing machines where you just feed in whole oranges and it cuts them in half and juices them in seconds? It's fucking incredible. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit of a tangent, but I yeah. just, I had to tell you about that, like, motherfucking juicer. And I mean, it just, it, it tosses away the, the, the husk of the, the orange. The, yeah. And, just, bam, nothing but pure, unadulterated OJ. Which would be great, too, for making old fashions and things, because then you'd have orange rind. True. We should buy one for the noble. We should, we should buy petition. one for here. Yeah, let's get one right now. Does anybody know where you can buy Angostura bitters? <laughs> Angostura bitters? I, I'm going on a tangent from a tangent. That's sure. Um, <laughs> one more tangent, and we're yeah, back Adam, where we started. Adam wants to get fancy with his home bar. No, I just I want to be able to make an old-fashioned at home. Uh, so all you need, really, is bourbon... Angostura bitters, a little bit of sugar, and citrus. Hmm. Well, plus water, but you have water. So, that's... I love it. You have water. Like, that's a given all around the world, right? 
Yeah. Everyone has water. Wait, no, that's not a fact. Gosh. Yeah, but I mean, in places where they don't have water, they're not going to be drinking all the fashions. I'm sure they don't give a shit. That, well, that's true. But it's, it's just funny that in my mind, I took for granted the fact that water was available. Period. So do every, I'm sure a lot of people ow. do. Ow, ow. My cat's attacking my hand. Don't be a dick, dick. <laughs> don't be a dick, cat. <laughs> what a jerk. He's been hiding under that chair. Apparently that's the coolest place in the apartment because yes. that's his spot. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, have to go feed Emily's cat again. That cat goes stir crazy. Every time I see him, he's just... Wow, wow. Smudge? Yeah, he's... He likes people. For, the, for those watching, Emily's not with us this week. She's in Toronto, visiting family and whatnot. And enjoying the, the Toronto Fringe Festival. Yes. Probably having a wonderful time without us. Yes. Stupid jealousy. <sighs> For shame. And anyway, it is what it is, but she'll be back. But while she's gone, I'm feeding her cat. And he is, uh, he fancies himself an escape artist. I feel like every time I open the door, he's hiding in a different spot waiting to get the, the jump on me. You know, so anyway. We're going to go feed him later. That'll be a fun day. We'll walk past a grocery store. Maybe I should buy some groceries. We should barbecue something. That's happening. Ribs. We're going to have a barbecue, and then we're going to go to the gym. That sounds good. Yeah. And then if we have time or whatever. Oh, tell them about this much ado about nothing. I didn't even know that Joss Whedon had made this until you mentioned it. I can't believe that. No, I, I've been very Joss, excited about Joss it Joss Whedon is a, a hero time. of mine. Because he's made some of the best movies and TV series of all time. Uh, I'm halfway through Dollhouse right now. I love Dollhouse. I'm I, I recently it. went through the entire series not too long ago. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm watching through it right now. It's very underrated. Eliza a lot of Dushku. people, like, he, he, even he joshes on it. Because um, it, it was fairly unsuccessful and it got pretty bad. And, well, I mean, I don't want to say bad reviews, but it got mixed reviews. Um, well, it's, it's, it's hard to market a show like that. And I think the name didn't help. No, true. Like, I'll be honest. I, I, The name Dollhouse does not at all... It was a really unique concept for a show, though. No, agreed. And it's a great show. And, like, well, I mean, clearly well-written. Joss Whedon wouldn't make something that wasn't well-written. But I think it was hard to market. Like, who do you market it to? Sci-fi Because, guys. well, yeah, but you got a, you got a chick. Like, the heroine mm. is a chick who's super hot... Do you market that to women and play up the, the women power? Or do you market it to guys and say, hey, hot chick? Or, like... I'm going to go with both. Yeah, but you can't... You can't be everything to all people, like... Joss Whedon can. Yeah, he's... Yeah, but at the time, was he, was he capable of, Like, that was okay. before Firefly. Was but it? after Buffy. Yeah. Well, Buffy went to shit. No, after, and think, after the third season, Buffy went to shit. I think Dollhouse was after Firefly as well. Must have been. I could be crazy. Could I be. I don't think Dollhouse was. I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll I do not. Th- we'll, we will look it up. Regardless, usually, usually I mean, we would be like, "No, yeah. you're wrong." Yeah. We have a fact checker, but not today. But he's released a uh, a black and white retelling, uh, a reimagining, if you will, of um, Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, and it's got Nathan Fillion and a bunch of his other uh, a bunch of his other uh, regulars from his shows. Um. And it, 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 they put it into, like, a detective crime type setting. Um, and it's, in, you know, shot in black and white. It was shot over two weeks at his cottage after he found all that success with the Avengers. Kind of, he's just winding down with his friends at this point. Which I think is a great place for a movie to start. Um, because it's, it's great to... S- you, can, <coughs> you can tell when people were having fun making a movie. You know, it, it, it shows in the performances and, and in the, uh, the, the general feel of the movie. Uh, I, I'm pretty excited about it. I was like a good Shakespeare. I mean, it, it's the actual Shakespeare text, too, so it's not so much a retelling, it is just kind of a... What's that, uh, what's that word? Anachronism, I suppose? Yeah, they're not re- They're not changing the story. They're No, no, it's all the original text, updated to a modern setting. Which is what they did with uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah, they, they've done it a number of times. I think they did it once with Othello. Yeah, oh. Did it once with Macbeth. They, yeah, they did that O oh, with, uh, was it Lawrence Fishburne? Uh, no. I think it was another black guy, you racist. No, I thought it was Lawrence <laughs> Fishburne. Um, I thought it was Omar Epps. 
Again, without oh, Emily. Oh my abs. Really? No. Uh, I don't remember him being in that movie. I pi- I'm picturing a young, younger uh, Lawrence Fishburne. A younger Lawrence Fishburne was in Apocalypse Now in like the 60s. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne is not a young man. Yeah, but, like, well, I'm talking about younger. Oh, was in the 90s. Yeah, uh, and I just, for some reason, I remember thinking, oh, Morpheus. <laughs> it's because you're racist. <laughs> We're going to, you know what, I'm looking that up. Fair enough. If you're going to be a dick, I'm going to look it up. But I was really surprised to see <clears throat> this this movie that Joss Whedon made kind of for fun, uh, playing alongside a lot of the summer blockbusters at Park Lane. And, you know, I thought it would just be some Oxford kind of art house fair, but no, they're they're running it. Uh, they're running into one of the, the main theaters, which, yeah, fuck, why not? Oh, was 2001. Oh. Ah. Mackay Pfeiffer. Mackay Pfeiffer? Who the hell is that guy? Omar Epps was way closer to Mackay Pfeiffer than Lawrence Fishburne was. Mackay Pfeiffer was in uh, think... House for a number of seasons. What am I thinking? Oh, hold on. I'm looking up Lawrence Fishburne. Jesus Christ, Adam, put the phone down. I will fight you. <laughs> now, see, now we're having a fight on air. I'm going to punch you. See, this you. is... Lem- Emily, this is what happens when she leaves. Start arguing about something stupid. Uh, actor. Actor. He's barely been in 94 movies. Uh, what are you looking for? Na, na, na. Sit there scrolling through. Shut up. I will punch you. Yeah. Am I gonna have to take that away from you? I will fight you. You're like a bad kid. It'll just give me one fucking second. Yeah. He was in Othello in 1995. That's what I was thinking of. He was in the actual Othello. Okay. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. I'm not racist. I had the wrong movie about Othello. My bad. Cool. Glad we got that settled. I was like, I fucking know Lawrence Fishburne was... <laughs> anyway, so we're both right, and we're both wrong. Yeah, I feel like that happens quite often. <laughs> <laughs> we, we live in this perpetual state of being right and wrong at the same time about <laughs> like, everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't mind being half right. Yeah, no, I, I can deal with half right. I'm <laughs> if good. I'm half right all the time, that's cool. <coughs> uh-huh. I at least know enough to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, My mom says, you know enough to be dangerous. That's it's, that's nice. <laughs> it's, it's like a clock that... It's like a broken clock that doesn't move is right more often than a clock that's off by like one minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, let's take a break because sure. it's balls hot and I need more water. See. And when we come back, there's a few things on our Facebook page I'd like to talk about. Uh, We actually have a Why Is This a Thing this week. We haven't had one of those in a while. So we'll talk about that, and we'll be back. So enjoy the break. Enjoy the break. Yeah. Oh, wait. I have to play stuff now because Emily's not here, so I have to do it. Get your shit together. Oasis. Epic Sports Pub. Where you don't have to spend a lot to get a lot. Adam, I so hot. You want your special day to be just right, right? Well, so did I. I called Maladjusted Media, and all the little details took care of themselves. An audio video setup, photographer, and even a videographer. All working as a team to capture the memories I cared about. Oh, and I saved a bundle by getting them all in the same place. You should try it. Visit us online, maladjustedmedia.ca. Hi, I'm Dan Sala from My Living Will. You're listening to It's On Halifax. I 
gonna stop this from recording over here for a bit because my computer is having an aneurysm. Yes. What do I need to have? We're going to the gym. Yeah. No beer. Ah. Counterproductive. Mm, counterproductive. I will fight you. I'll go to the gym after a couple of beer. And I will still outbench you. I think this, this bit of water here makes like eight liters today. <clears throat> Bacon wave. <clears throat> Bacon wave. So much fun. Oh, yeah. Having fun. I haven't been monitoring the Twitter or anything like that, so I hope nobody's been talking to us. <clears throat> yeah. This is really hard without Emily. I know. She should never leave again. Never leave us, Emily.
Whenever you're ready, guys, Smiley. <clears throat> Are you looking at hentai porn? Yes. <coughs> I'm playing a game. <coughs> Actually, it's before a collectible card game. Oh, yeah, you were mentioning something about that last time. On the internet. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Okay, let's go. I feel like we're in a kilt today. <laughs> Free balling it? Uh, yeah, just letting her hang out. Hails you. Uh, I have a kilt is the thing. I could do that. Nice. But I would um, rather go through all of today without the chance of seeing your genitals. That's... <laughs> Show me your genitals. Your, your genitals. Gen <gasps> Show me your genitals. Genitalia! <laughs> Sorry. John was awesome. I love that game. Right, let's get back to the show thing we're doing. We're so awful. We are the worst. Um, ready? Well, hello there, neighbors. We didn't see you come in there. Hi, everybody, we're back. We were just on a quick little break, had to get refreshments, and I clothed myself. Um, thank I, you, thank you, by the way. Thank I, you. My shame got the better of me. <clears throat> Your scent got the better of me. Oh, that's that's <laughs> low, Adam. It's a sweaty day. Come on, give a guy it, a break. It is a sweaty day, but it was your fault because you jogged here. I jogged here in a full heat suit with a sweater, which was kind of stupid on like the hottest day of the year. Man, I'm a badass. I, I almost threw up in front of the Humanity Cafe on South Park Street. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> just, you know, jogging nonchalantly down the road with my gym bag. And, just, blah, oh God. and then take off my sweater and continue running. Yup, hard as fuck. <laughs> Alrighty then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, whatever. So, there were some stories on the Facebook page, as I had mentioned, that I, I did to not talk about. touch that girl, I swear to God. What? Nothing. <laughs> First off, uh, bus fare hike. Yeah, oh, don't get me started on bus fare. Yeah, Halifax Transit is seeing fit to raise their fares, two fifty for the average person. I like how it used to be an insult to tell somebody that they suck dick for bus fare, but now that's pretty much like minimum wage. I mean, it's close. Yeah. Yep. It's. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Especially since the service has not improved in a very long time. I like how they went on strike, and they're, they're hiking the prices, and it's just, they're still late most of the time. I hear people complain about them at least once or twice a week, if not once or twice a day. Well, they, it's because they fucking suck. Like, why do you, I moved to a different city because of Metro Transit. Think about it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I've been to a lot of other cities that had pretty brilliant metro transit. Like, I, I was spoiled with, with transit in Vancouver. Holy shit. That's how you do transit. And here we are in Halifax getting boned by Halifax Transit. And we don't even have that big of a city. Like, how fucking hard is it to get people where you need to go on time? 
Well, and that's just it. Like, they, they refuse to redo the schedule. They just keep tweaking things. Tweaking is over. It's not going to work. It's not going to fix anything until you actually redo the schedule from scratch. You're not going to get anything. I feel like this is something the new mayor should uh, should tackle. I think it's I it's on be... his plate, and it was actually part of the mayoral debate. Oh, I would say. I mean, the uh, <clears throat> the strike at the time was I mean, inescapable. It was affecting everybody in the city. It was one of the, the bigger talking points of the whole election. Well, it cost me over $1,000. Gross. That strike did. Plus all the bills I had to pay. Like, it took me a long time to get out of that debt. Right? Because not only did I spend all my savings that I had, and now I have no savings, but I I was in debt for by by trying to fucking get to work and back. Yeah. Like just, just forget getting around, just fucking going to work. It's good times. Uh yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad I use my feet to get around everywhere. I mean, I walk everywhere, I I run everywhere, and it's inconvenient. I mean, but. On the money that I, all the money that I save uh, by not using our shitty metro transit, I can afford a cab every now and then. Like I went to the market yesterday and I had all this fresh milk and and unprocessed um, unprocessed meat with no additives or you know no preservatives and stuff. And I was like, I'm not gonna make it home with all of this food. It's going to spoil on the 40 minute walk in the blistering heat. So, you know, instead of take a bus, I'm like, fuck it, I'll just call a cab and do it that once you know it's it's pretty bad when people opt to walk or take a cab over simply just taking a bus yeah and buses smell funny and anyway that was a oh I just fucking hate metro transit I, I remember the rants that you used to go on about metro transit I swear to god one of your nuts was just gonna shoot into your body at some point you were just straining yourself so bad oh so mad just hateful <clears throat> well like, like you you would the uh, you know what never mind I'm not getting into it because <laughs> I may never get it's, back. This is one of Adam's hot button issues. So you 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 ever want to get him on a rant or you ever want to just push his buttons? Metro Transit. Go fuck yourself. I knows it. I knows it. Uh, that said, and there's been a little more as far as uh, Halifax Metro news. I'm glad we avoided that whole water boil warning this weekend, uh, cause. They would have picked the wrong fucking weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd be dead by now, because I'd just be trying to put water in my face. I'd be like, no, I'm not boiling it, and I'm not cooling it down. I'm not waiting 25 minutes to have water. And I probably wouldn't have had the wherewithal or just the foresight to go to a store and buy a four-liter jug of it or anything, because I'm an idiot that way. I've just been drinking. It's too hot to think. Well, exactly. My brain don't work. My brain not good working thing. <clears throat> Let's switch gears for a second. I want to talk about why is this a thing. Oh, it's always with the depressing stuff. Yeah. Man, you're, you're a dark dude. Dude, like, this is the kind of thing that makes me think, like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Pakistani, Pakistani sisters killed for dancing in the rain. For enjoying their oh. life and living it to the fullest. Well, there was apparently... Uh, the biggest issue was... They were blamed for damaging their family's reputation. There was a video of them and a couple other kids dancing in regular clothing. They weren't wearing burkas or whatever. Yeah. And uh, there was a video that went around the internet <clears throat> of them playing, <clears throat> pardon me, in the rain. And it damaged their, uh, their family's reputation. Ugh. Honor killings, man. <clears throat> yeah. Death so. sentence. Automatic death sentence. So five gunmen shot the two girls and their mother eh. dead in their home. Like, what the fuck? You know, and I, I try to preach religious tolerance and, and cultural understanding and whatever, and then I just keep hearing about shit like this, and I, I have no tolerance for it whatsoever, and... I just get hateful immediately. I have absolutely no you know respect or tolerance for that kind of bullshit. Like I really don't. It was the girl's stepbrother who did it and uh, killed... Was this in Pakistan? Yes. 
Oh. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. he, he, the stepbrother killed them and... It's a less and, surprising. And their mother. I mean, you hear it happen in, in the Western world from time to time, but we've been bringing the hammer down on people who, who commit that kind of shit. There's been honor killings closer to home as well. I mean, there's been a few in Canada over the last couple of years, and it's just like, the courts will just th- straight up throw the book at you. <laughs> Yeah, the the, the the thing is, the, the, the two sisters' other brother is filing all kinds of suits against the, well, the, the five guys, right? His stepbrother and the four other people involved. But, <laughs> Probably going to get him <clears throat> nowhere. Well, they've already captured them. All four of them except for the stepbrother. The stepbrother's believed to be in hiding. But, I mean, the, the way the justice system works over there, I mean, I, it wouldn't be a surprise... For them to actually be put towards the court, get a slap on the wrist, and you know, it's like, no, nah, well, that was legit. Well, I, I don't think so. I think probably not. I mean, I I don't know. Pakistan is definitely less backwards than people might imagine, and then it's portrayed in the media and things like that. Um, but this whole Muslim extremist thing—it's getting out of hand. I mean, something's got to be done about it. Well, and, and over the you know, this past week. Um, the Muslim Brotherhood was deposed from the parliament, uh, the, the the government in Egypt. Yeah, the first democratically elected government. Oh, in, fucking in democratically, Egypt it's, it's a, was overthrown. It's a U.S. puppet government. <clears throat> call it what it is. I don't know enough about the situation to call it what it is. It, um, I don't know. It's like they democratically elected him, and then he just, I don't know, I don't know. He was just like, yeah, you know what? Let's do the hardcore Muslim thing. Why not? Bam. And it was one of those situations where the, his advisors and, you know, counselors and whatever were, were more running the situation than, than he was. Um, I don't know. I'm glad I'm glad to have seen the coup happen, though. Because Egypt used to be a, uh, you know, it used to be one of the pillars of humanity. It, it, you know, it, during the, the age of the Roman Empire, during the age of the, the pharaohs. I mean, it, Egypt has always been a... a a cultural powerhouse and even an economic powerhouse, yada yada yada, and it's been ruined by, by religion. Yeah, it yeah, it's a bummer because mm-hmm. I've always wanted to go there, and it's really hard when the political climate is hostile to say the least. I would love to see the pyramids. The and I oh, I just shit. hope to God there isn't yeah, some don't... shit like in China where they start the government starts bulldozing landmarks or or historical sites yeah it's religion seems to be the biggest problem Mm -hmm. in most of the world's issues right now like yeah Uh, well and a lot of great thinkers had it right um for a long time i mean carl sagan wrote a demon haunted world I, i think in like the mid 80s if i'm not mistaken and, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he warned against things like this exactly. Great book, by the way. Um, if anyone is interested in the topic, go pick it up. Carl Sagan is a great thinker. I, I'm i I'm not into the literature. Not into the literature. What was the book you bought yesterday? Uh, the book I bought yesterday was uh, The Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, the uh, closest thing to a philosopher king that the Roman Empire has ever seen. Died of old age which was kind of unheard of in 170 A.D., um, was a, a huge fan of Plato. Um, he's, he, by all accounts, a great man. You might know the name from um, Gladiator. He was the old emperor who dies near the beginning of the uh, of the movie and has his son Commodus succeed him, who was played by Joaquin Phoenix in that movie, who turned out to be a shitty tyrant, kind of like another Nero. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, Roman history, man. Shit's thick. <laughs> Interesting. Right on. Um, what you got here? I, well, I, I want to show this. This is a... There's been a bunch of police reports from Halifax Regional Police. And, and they've been putting out press releases and, and things saying, Stop fucking leaving your pets in your car. Stop leaving your pets unattended in your car while you go shopping. Stop doing it. And this is a bit of a video, and I say a bit of a video, it's a, it's a video of a Better. veterinarian who locks himself in a car with the windows cracked and everything for a half an hour. 
Ooh, so, I don't imagine this goes well. No, it it most certainly shouldn't. And uh, I think we're going to see how this works. So here you go. Hi, I'm Dr. Ernie Ward. You know how veterinarians are always telling you never leave your pet in a parked car? It gets really hot. This is a typical summer's day. So I thought I would put myself in a parked car and let's see just how hot it gets. Come on. Okay, so I'm your pet and I'm now in the car. I've got all four windows cracked down about an inch. So let's start a timer and let's see exactly how hot it gets in here. The thermometer is reading at right about 94 degrees, 95 degrees. So it's pretty hot in here, but we're just getting started. So let's just kind of sit back and see how it feels in here. Okay, I'm at five minutes in. It is unbelievably hot in here. We're nearing 100 degrees already. And I can tell you that it is stifling in here. Even with all four windows cracked, there is no breeze at all. It is entirely still in here. It, it, uh, it's oppressive. I mean, that's the best word for it. If, and 10 minutes in, I'll tell you, it is almost unbearable. Uh, at this point, the temperature is about 106 degrees. So, I mean, it's, it's just getting to the point now where I can barely stand it. Uh, there's a breeze outside and it's very frustrating because I can actually see the trees, the wind blowing, and yet even with all four windows cracked between an inch and a half and two inches, uh, there's absolutely no breeze in this car. So if I were a little dog left out here, maybe I'm barking, I'm very nervous, uh, I can only imagine what the core body temperature must be at this point. As I mentioned, it's 106 in here at 10 minutes in, and uh, I'm beginning to wonder if this was a very bad idea indeed. Okay, I'm at 15 minutes now, and it's uh, about 110 in my car. At uh, this point, I would imagine if I were a small dog or a dog that is uh, older, I'm gonna be in serious trouble. It's been 20 minutes now at this point, and it is uh, right, hovering right around 110, 112, it's kind of going back and forth here, uh, depending on when we look at it. But uh, needless to say, it's incredibly uh, hot. 25 minutes. It's now, oh gosh, what is it? 113 degrees. It's, um, it's awful. Uh, the only thought that's going through my head right now is I just, I want out of the car. You know, it's just uh, everything in my body is saying, get out, get out, get out. Uh, I can just feel rivulets of sweat just careening down my body. I don't know if you can tell, but I mean, I'm just, I'm fully drenched now. Uh, I have sweat just completely cascading down my face and nose, my lips. Um, and I can do that. A dog can't. A dog can't perspire. I mean, the whole point of this exercise was really to see what it feels like. What, what would it feel like to a dog to be stuck in a car? You know, you're helpless. You have no control over what's happening. You don't understand what's happening. You just know that your body is getting so overheated that you can be in real danger. I mean, this kills. And it's a lousy way to die. Okay, made it, 30 minutes. 30 minutes in a parked car with the windows cracked. The temperature right now is about 115, 116, really hot. What I really wanted to set out to do was see how it felt to be left in a parked car if I were a dog. And I know what's going on. I'm in control of the situation. What I can't imagine is how helpless and frightening it would be for a dog to be left in a car not knowing when you're gonna come and slowly but surely having the energy and the life just burnt out of them by this heat. And you can make all it's the really excuses right you right want. Now. You can say it'll just be for a second. I'm gonna leave the windows cracked. It's a breezy day. It's not that hot. But those excuses are meaningless 
unless you have sat in that car during that same time. And I can tell you, this has been an eye-opening experience for me as a veterinarian. And it will certainly make me that much more adamant and so the, passionate the, the about department. telling people never, people who ever or, you know, leave your pet or, or in a parked car during warm weather. I don't know. <clears throat> 117 degrees in the car, though. Yeah, that sounds unpleasant. And that had to be somewhere down in Florida, Miami kind of thing. With palm trees and whatnot, sitting around. Yeah, but I mean, come on. Yeah, that's... I mean, that's like accidentally locking yourself in a sauna and dying in it. Get a Darwin Award for that. Something else that kind of... <clears throat> that happened here in Halifax was... Uh, there was an explosion on Wednesday, I believe. Woo! Uh, in the woods behind... Well, somewhere in Burnside there. And there's this guy who actually I know from around town who was used to be a regular at the Oasis till I barred him for selling crack to kids outside. Oh. Or coke, I should say. Yeah. Uh, Did he have a meth lab? It was uh, a meth lab, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Damn it. He had a sh- but he was living in a shack in the woods. Oh. Because, like, the food people, whatever they're called, had uh, cut him off because they found him to be capable and he was basically just, they thought he was just milking the system or whatever. <laughs> So he's, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm apparently selling coke to kids and living in a shack that you built yourself in the middle of the fucking woods in Burnside. That's sounds, what you gotta do. Sounds like a real winner. Yeah, so he he was heating the place with propane he was stealing. Okay. And one of his propane tanks exploded. Eh, sounds like he got what was coming to him. I totally would have went with Meth Lab, though. God damn. He, he wasn't home at the time. Oh. Shit just blew up, and then, uh... Now his house is gone, and they've discovered that he'd been living there for 15 years. Wow. That's a bit disgusting. So yeah, he'd been living there for 16, or sorry, 15 years. And uh, he, apparently there was this gigantic explosion that scared the shit out of everyone, because propane blew up. Huh. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> they, they went out there, put the fire out, and then they went back the next day to put another fire out because it had... Smoldered? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Which isn't exactly, you know, showing well on the fire department, but whatever. Yeah. What do you do? They're doing their best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And forest fire. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Clearly, they're not friends of Smokey. But. Sounds like a euphemism. We're getting high. <laughs> That's fair. I think I might have actually used that before. I used to really like, do you know William Holden? That that was a good one. William Holden? (laughs) Yeah, he was an actor. It's, we were nerdy. We were nerdy kids. (laughs) Were? He was in the Wild Bunch. You were nerdy kids? Oh, shut up. No, I'm, I'm a super nerd. Super nerd! Yeah, I think, uh, that's all the stories I have on the Facebook page from this week. If you guys have other stuff that you see that you're just like, what the fuck? Or any, <laughs> anything, the fuck? especially if it's local. We, I really like the idea of uh, keeping some, some of our, our focus on the, the local uh, happenings. Like that time that a deer charged into the uh, Uncommon Grounds down on South Park Street last <laughs> year? That shit was hilarious. That's great news. That was, and it's good TV. Uh, when, yeah, when is that ever going to happen? Probably never again. But you never know, it's Halifax. Very rural area. <laughs> Shit's kind of normal. I, lo- I love how everybody in the... I live in the city. Mm, you live in Halifax. That's not... <clears throat> Technically, yeah. yes, Halifax is a city. But I saw a family of raccoons not a week ago. <laughs> well, not just that, but, like, think about it. We're not a big city. No. No, we're very close to, to nature. We're, we're a small town that thinks it's a big city. We've got a big city edge to our country bumpkin lifestyle. Which makes it all the better when I go home to Cape Breton. I'm like, ah, city boy, huh? It's like, not fucking really. Have you, you, have you been redneck. there? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And there are varying levels. You know, my dad grew up in a place where literally nobody lives there now. People moved away. And the last guy that left took the sign that said, Welcome to Stouffville. 
Yeah. Like, <laughs> might as well just take there, this down. There is no town. Um, and he's, <laughs> I always joked, I was like, so you didn't even live in the sticks. You lived in the stick. Yeah. I like that. Like, <laughs> you lost your plural. That's how, that's how far out there he was. Yeah, what? Well, population zero? Not a town anymore. <laughs> yeah. Literally a ghost town. The population is you and your family, and then the house down the road. It's not a town. Well, I mean, at least, at least you're pretty sure to know your neighbors. Well, not if you have to walk three miles to get to them. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, who, who rural, the cares? rural living. I love it. Not really. God, I hate it. I hate going back home. Because I'm just such a city boy now. What, what am I gonna I, do? What, 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 would I, what would I do without my hobby shops and my theaters? But I'll tell and you, my old fashions. The, the two places, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can't leave Halifax because Jenner Cormier. Like, fuck that guy. He's ruined the rest of my life. And I can't leave the country <clears throat> because of a criminal record. I was, go- yeah. <laughs> I was going to, um, I was going to retire in St. John's, Newfoundland. I think. But now, I have to stay here. I love me some Halifax. Yeah. I love Halifax. I, I, I think I could raise a kid in Halifax. <clears throat> Definitely. I, 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 I always said that Cape Breton <clears throat> was a nice place to raise a kid or to die. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I'd like them to have a, a few more cultural options or, like, educational options or shit like that. Growing up in a rural town does weird shit to kids. But what do you do? Also, I don't want to give up my fancy drinks. I can't wait for Jenner to come back from the contest. I know. I want to know how it's going. Yeah. He tweeted where he, he's been tweeting his locations, but it's not uh, no <clears> updates <throat> on the uh, on the actual contest. No. Ah. Soon enough. He's, he said he was going to be tweeting pictures of his submissions. See, it'll be so much easier to get Jewel State to come out and have a drink with us if we can tell her that he's the best bartender in the world and not just in Canada. Hey, dude, best bartender in the country is nothing to fucking sneeze that's, at. That's true. That's true. Nothing to scoff about. That is that is an accomplishment, like that I could only dream of. Yes, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, I, I think mean, I think we're good. I think I think our plan will work. <laughs> Go off without a hitch. Hell, we should see how many of the uh, the stars that we could get to come drinking with us. Just go out for a star-studded evening, drinking at Noble. We will, yeah, we, I will, we will show them fucking Halifax. I'm so excited. Ah, that's because we got our finger mm. on the motherfucking pulse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So, I think... I think that should happen. But, uh, stop giving away all our plans on... On, uh... Like, the secret plans. The basics of it, you understand. I'm I'm knitting my fingers right now. I'm very... (laughs) Twirling my mustache. Excellent. So, that said, I think we've, uh... We've come to the end of our show for this week. Oh, good. I was running out of sweat. (laughs) Such an ass. All right, so we're going to go feed Emily's cat, barbecue something. You're welcome, Emily. Also, <laughs> ribs. And go check out Joss Whedon's Much Ado About Nothing, which you should also do. Yes, because, I mean, I know he made a lot of money for Avengers, but support the guy doing something he loves. Um, with, with a bunch of his, his friends, friends in a cabin in yeah, the woods. This is filmmaking at its finest, it, doing it just for the love of it. Um, and, you know, get a little shake of spear in you. Get some fucking culture in you, you I can't goons. wait to, I can't wait to hear Nathan Fillion speak. Is he gonna do the accent? No, no. He doesn't he does it with no accent. He's saying these Shakespearean words, but sounding exactly like Nathan Fillion. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Let's I'm do excited. that. So enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Uh, stay, stay hydrated. Safe, stay hydrated. Don't leave your fucking pets in the goddamn car. Wear sunscreen. Always wear sunscreen. We're not doing that right now. Okay. Okay. Bye. This episode of It's On Halifax was brought to you by Maladjusted Media and Oasis on Spring Garden Road. But yeah, did you see the new line of... uh...